Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Safwan and today I'll be talking to you about web template components. So what are these? These are reusable components that can be customized by your portal designer. For example, I have these as my custom web component. I can click here and I can say uh, city equals Seattle. This will basically filter my contacts and only show contacts whose city is Seattle. So if I view this page, uh, you'll see that it it's showing two contacts, Patrick and Thomas. And in the back end, Patrick and Thomas does have the city set to Seattle. Now, the good thing with these components is that you can also duplicate it. And now I can change for this component. I can say the city needs to be Redmond. Let's save and preview this. So you can see that for this duplicate component, we've got uh, two different contacts who, because they have their city in Redmond. So this is what a web template component is. And I'll be showing you five simple steps to get you started with web components. The first thing I would recommend everyone doing is go to this link here. This is the documentation to um, turn on the enhanced data model in your environment. So if you scroll down, the first thing it says is to um, go to Power Platform Admin Center, select the environment you want to enable uh, the V2 data model, and then turn on this switch here for Power Pages. So this is my Admin Center. If I go to the bottom right, I will see my Power Pages sites. Once I'm here, um, this switch was initially turned off, so I turned this on. And when you turn this on, it will show you a pop-up drawer. And in this drawer, it will ask you to install um, a package. So the main package that's required for this is this PowerPages core. And this is also documented on this site, so do check this one out. Once you've installed this, you can then go to your PowerPages home, and you can create a new portal. So as far as I know, um, existing portals won't be able to convert the data model into V2 as of the preview. Um, this might change. And also, it's documented that um, not all of these templates uh, support V2 data model. So I would recommend going with the first one. Uh, that way, you're guaranteed that you will get the V2 model. After your portal is created, you can actually go to the admin center and you can go into your web portal and then you can look at the data model for this and if it says enhanced then you have the new data model so once you've done that um, I would recommend you to go to your VS code and then install the new portal so if you haven't watched Nick Dolman's video on this uh, do check his YouTube video out um, he shows you how to download and upload um, v2 models so when you're actually downloading uh, make sure to just check all the portals on your um, on your environment, and and then passing this dash v flag, what this will do is this will show you all the data models, and what you want to make sure is that your your portal has the v2 model. And then when you do download your portal, um, make sure to pass in this dash mv2. So this will tell you um, this will tell to download the v2 version of your portal. The next step is to go and create um, a web template. So I can go to my web templates and create a new web template. So I already have created a web template and this is a very simple list component. This is a custom list that I'll have. This is just a sanity test, so it's not going to be very complicated or anything like this. this is just to get you started with web template components. The next thing you would do is copy this piece of code. Again, you can find this in the documentation or I'll put a link to my GitHub uh, where I'm using this code. What this is saying is that the type of this web template is functional. Next is the display name descriptions. These are very simple. And then you've got these tables. Uh, this is an array where you can pass in the logical names of the tables in Dataverse. This basically allows you to quickly go to that table from the portal designer. So for example, if I go to this component that I have created before and click on edit data, um, one of the one of the table names that I've listed in this component is account. So that's why I can see this account. And if I click here, it will take me to this data tab and will show me the accounts table. So the next thing is this params array. This params array is basically the inputs that you want to take from the portal designer, right? So I've got two params over here. So I've got the title and the list elements. So, so the title, I'll just display it over here. And then I'll be displaying the list over here and I'll be looping through this list elements, separate the items by comma. And then what I'll do is I'll split the string 
in comma and then I'll print them out. The other thing that I would highlight is when you're actually uploading your code, make sure to pass in this dash mv2, otherwise this particular code will not get uploaded. The next thing you want to do is go to the place where you want to add in the code. For my case, um, I want to add this list in my home page. So under web pages, I'll go to the home content page. And then just after the main button I have in my home, which is this one over here, I'll, um, I'll add in this list. So in this case, this is nothing but, this is very simple, just including a web template as you would do normally. And then you can pass in some default parameters. In this case, I've got title and I've got elements. So title, I'll just say list. And then I have elements as Seattle and Redmond. So let's save that and upload that and make sure to pass in the dash MV2 flag. So we're back at my home screen and you can see that um, my pages got up updated with the custom component. Now I can come in here and I can quite easily just change any of this text here. So let's say custom list and let's add in a couple of other cities. And then once I hit done, you'll see that this um, got this component change automatically. So this is a very simple example, nothing too hard code here. This is just to show you how to get started with web components. I'll make a few other videos in the future showing you how I think uh, these components can be used. If you think this video was useful, make sure to subscribe and share and um, I'll be back with more. Bye.